Now, let's look at a few microservices principles to ensure that you design them correctly. Firstly, each microservice should only be responsible for a single functional process. Secondly, microservices should not share code or data. You might say, hang on, is that not a violation of the drive principle? Well, technically yes, but consider the following example. Let's say that 10 microservices are sharing the same library. Now, if you make a mistake in that single library, all those 10 microservices could break. In other words, for microservices, independence and autonomy is more important than code reusability. Now, I'm not saying throw the dry principle out of the door. That's still a very good principle. If you design it correctly, each microservice should only facilitate a specific business domain and bounded context. And then the final principle is that microservices should not communicate directly with each other, but they should use asynchronous event-driven communication using an event bus. Now you might say, hang on, why can't a microservice call another microservice over HTTP? And the problem with that is if microservice A calls microservice B, and B fails, A will most probably fail as well. Now, an event bus creates this perfect isolated layer in between where microservice A is the producer of an event message and microservice B the consumer. Now, the producer should not care who consumes the event message, nor should the consumer care where the message comes from. Now, that is just a few principles to make sure that you design your microservices correctly.